Okay, guys, here's what we've got going on. We've got more issues with the title company and with trusts and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of start from the basics here and have you help me work through this whole trust situation. So according to what I understand here, I could be misunderstanding the title company, but the title company says Oregon statutes do not allow them or do not allow people to hold title to a property in a land trust. And that's how we, you suggest that we take these properties for, to avoid the do on sale clause and to have anonymity. Is that correct? Is that the way I understand it? I, I know that's not right because we have other clients in Oregon who've done it. They said that they stopped doing it around 2004 is what I'm. <laughs> this, this would have been about a month ago or three weeks ago. <laughs> okay. I just, I wonder if we're just barking up the wrong tree with title, but I've, I've called a couple other title companies and they won't even close subject to deals. So it's, they said that they don't do it anymore. So I don't know. Okay. I've, I've got some call, calls out to some other investors that have done subject to deals to find out who they're using. So hopefully we can get some other suggestions, but I don't know. This is just weird. So she said they can close in a business trust. If it's an entity, they said that a land trust is not a qualified entity to be able to hold title. They can do a living trust. So a revocable living trust, which they call a family trust, or they can do a business trust, which is the same exact thing is just registered with the state of Oregon as an entity, like an LLC. Those are the two that they can insure and they can close with. So my question is, a living trust, uh, are those are those more complicated than a land trust? Well, a couple things here I'd like to jump in. So first yeah. of all, uh, a land trust, is, when we say land trust, that may not be the name by which attorneys know them. It's really just a grantor revocable trust. It sounds very similar to what you just mentioned, the family trust or the living trust or whatever. But um, but the other issue is that, okay, whenever it's like a title company or an attorney says, no, you can't do that here. Oh, could you please point me to the statute that says you can't hold title in a trust? Because, I mean, for goodness sakes, I mean, if somebody wants to transfer their property, their real estate into a trust for estate planning purposes which happens all over America all day, every day. Are, you, are they saying that would never happen in Oregon? That's ridiculous. Right. right? So those, I would ask them for the statute, but you so know. She did give me, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, Blair. Yeah. She did give me the statute. Let's see it. Um, yeah, so I mean, I have the statute, the <laughs> number. Mm-hmm. And it says, State of Oregon statute does not recognize a land trust as valued entity capable of holding title to real estate, family, oh, that's what she said. So, but she gave me the statute number. Okay. Well, let's put it in the chat. I'll look at it later if you want, but. Okay. The, uh, the issue is really the title company wanting to insure title. Yeah. And they don't want to do that if they don't know and have control over the trust itself, it sounds like. They want it to be registered with the state and all that stuff. They can do a living trust, which is, what's the difference? Now you're asking, uh, you're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> I would talk to Bronchik. Did you get a hold of him? Yeah, he thinks that these people are nuts. Okay, so it's not just me that he's thinks that. So he's saying they're nuts, and the title company is saying that he doesn't know what he's talking about because he's from Arizona. Yeah. Or from Nevada. He, he doesn't understand Oregon statutes. And he's yeah. saying they're nuts. There's no such thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the There's... other way to look at this is, um, you know, another argument ag against the title company is, um, if you guys are familiar with Lou Brown, he's like guru of trusts, right? And the way he describes it and explains it is that trusts have existed before any American statute was ever put in place. Therefore, they supersede any kind of statute that a state like Oregon could put in place. Trusts mm -hmm. existed thousands of years before that, so they operate under their own rules. Now, don't I don't you, know if that's true or not, but go ahead, Jeff. Uh, 
Oregon has what's called the Coalition of Oregon Land Trusts. It's supported by, is it Governor Kate Brown? Oh, God, that's yes. terrible. She supports it. She's the devil. Okay, well, she's she's your friend in this regard. She supports okay, it. There's a whole coalition of Oregon land trusts, and there's a nonprofit organization in Portland that deals with this issue. But land trusts are clearly legal in Oregon, and they're supported by the governor. Clearly <laughs> legal or illegal? Legal. Okay, well, there we go. Well, it's not a question of whether or not it's legal. It's a question of whether or not title will ensure it, and they will not. That's what the statute is indicating from what I understand, is that the state of Oregon statute, no title, what she told me was based on the state of Oregon statute, no title company can issue title insurance on a land trust. And okay, so don't get title insurance. Well, we tried to get around that, but they, won't close, they won't close these transactions without title insurance. Right. That's because they want you to buy a title policy. They don't care about you and your closing. I've said that from the beginning. So right. that's what I was saying the other day. And just for the benefit of everybody listening here, I mean, maybe just have Bronchick prepare all your documents, send them over to a mobile notary in your town and just screw now, the, the other, title company. So the other issue with that, I mentioned that, would you guys just do a complimentary signing? If we, um, if, if we had our attorney just prepare the documents, would you do yeah. a complimentary signing? And she said that we could do that. However, the issue with that was that they would not be able to, without title insurance, they would not pull um, encumbrances on the property. They right. can't do a full title they, report. They won't do a full title report. And that and if we don't do a full title report, then we don't know if there's any encumbrances on the property. And this guys one are on they're on crack. You can pay any title company in the US a fee to get a title report. Ask them for a lot book, if nothing else. That she be said good. that she said we can get like a basic title report, like a um, for like 200 bucks, but it doesn't, it only shows monetary encumbrances. It won't show judgments liens child support stuff all that it won't it will not pull that stuff unless we get title insurance okay she's talking about vol and they're not she's talking about voluntary liens versus involuntary liens mm. um and same thing they should still be able to do it for you that doesn't make any sense you you got to deal with a different title company or something all right okay <laughs> Yeah, I just, I don't understand the whole, like, and she's saying that, like, if we don't get title insurance, we can't get back out of the land trust. We can't sell it back out of it because it's uninsurable. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense, but um, I would find another title company. Okay. Even if you got to drive to Portland, I mean, wouldn't it be worth it? You don't have to put up a business Well, call. yeah, we're just, we're kind of in a pickle right now because we have a closing schedule for next Friday. Wednesday. Or Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Time to so, get it going. <laughs> and we have. money on the line. Yeah, we have um, advised this particular, we're assigning the contract and we had shared with him our trust document and everything was, you know, good to go and moving forward. And then title just threw us this little, um, you know, wrench in our plans like at last minute. Oh, by the way, sorry, the, our legal department has reviewed this again and we cannot approve it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Would there be anything wrong with, with registering this trust with the state of Oregon as a business entity? Will that disallow, I mean, will that, not protect us from the do on sale clause if we do that and will it not give us the privacy that we're looking for well when you register it you probably gotta you know disclose all the interests in it don't you uh, well if we do a so. member member managed you know entity then the member could be our trustee i suppose which doesn't have our name or just do the living trust thing, the revocable living trust. I don't know what the difference is between a land trust and a revocable living trust. I can't see any negligible. difference. I can't see any difference. I don't understand what the problem is. Yeah. So just maybe just do that. But ask them, what's the difference? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I need to quit going through my, like, title lady and just call up their legal department and, like, get, quit going, like, around someone else. 
Yeah. Are you talking, who are you talking to there? Are you talking to the title officer or who? Yes. The TO? Yeah, the, the lady that closes our thing. She's like been doing this for 27 years, but she doesn't know everything, obviously. But no. she says this is the lesson she's getting from the legal department. <clears throat> um, okay, so you, you, are you seeing Ashley's chat there? Yeah, that's so funny. That's what I don't understand. Land trusts are only to hold title to real estate, and they're saying that they're not a – Oregon doesn't allow them to hold title to real estate. Yeah. It's the, it's the most bass backwards thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's making me want to punch myself in the face. <laughs> well, put <sighs> yourself instead of the, the title officer. Yeah, no be better. Jeez. Okay. Well, I don't know. So I guess we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, I mean, the only other, I don't know, you could look at it like, you know, you're not closing on this thing. You're, your buyer is. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> right. So just, you know, tell him to put it in a revocable living trust like the title company wants, and then everybody's happy, and you're out of the deal anyway. Right. Yeah. Well, I'd like to know what the difference is. Like, I was reading a revocable living trust, and it just has a bunch of stuff about pets and beneficiaries <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, it's about, like, people's last will and testament, you know? Yeah. I don't know. They just seem uh, a little yeah. bit more involved. But. I mean, I just did a search online and it talks about revocable living trust. A trustee can hold title to your property, can be the most elegant solution to property control in the event of incapacity or death. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You may designate who will serve as trustee and successor trustee. And if even if you are initially serving as trustee, your successor trustee can take over in the event of your incapacity. Or, you know, this is like, sounds just like a land trust. Mm -hmm. they, they, I can't see anything that's a diff. Like, I can't understand what the difference is, according yeah. to what I've read. So maybe with yeah. this situation, so we can just move forward, we just suggest that our sell, our buyer just gets a gets a um, family trust and move on. Here, Ashley uh, provided a link in the chat. A land trust versus a living trust. I'm just pulling it up now, but you guys can all see that. Thank you, Ashley, by the way. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to read all this. You guys can read it if you want, but uh, it looks like this is probably the answer here. Benefits of a land trust, all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how to access that, but I'll figure it out. Well, it's in the chat there. You guys see? Oh, you're on your phone, aren't you? Yeah. Your mobile device. Okay. Well, you'll see it. You'll have we'll it. We'll get anyway. it. We'll yeah. get it. Yeah. Well, other than that, I went on an appointment to, for a subject to owner finance deal today, and I went and I'm going on an appointment for a wholesale deal tomorrow. So we'll see how those turn out. Awesome. Right on. I'll, let, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Post in the group. We want to hear. We'll do it. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Get you muted back here. Jeff, anything else on that no. topic? No, uh, yeah, I, I, I think Jim nailed it right up front when he said, I think we should move from Oregon. Yeah, probably, yeah. It probably makes more sense than anything else. Yeah, yeah, or at least find a new title company. But, and this, you know, kind of is a good argument for what I say all the time. It's like the title company does not care about you. They only care about themselves. That's why you want an attorney somebody who actually represents you protecting your interests, preparing the document, at least preparing the documents that are then executed by the title company. Uh, title company, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but they're in it to make money on the title insurance policy that you buy from them. Is that basically it? That is true. But like, you know, all of these things, they're, they're like, look, they're like a lawyer, right? They're, they're run now by the law department and their law department's main job is to say no to everybody. Yeah, protect their backside. Just like a lawyer will tell you, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Because they don't want the liability of, you know, sticking their head out of the hole. So um, they'll all tell you that until you find the one who doesn't, you know, and you have to go with them. Yeah. And all right. knows, Onchek will know that stuff. Yeah, and by the way, in case anybody doesn't know, there's uh, Bronchick is uh, Bill Bronchick. He's an attorney in Denver, isn't that right? Yes. 
Yeah, Denver, Colorado, and uh, he's been around a while in the real estate investor world. You can look him up. I uh, I don't know him. I've never used him. I've just seen him online. He's one of those uh, real estate investor, legal attorney guru type people. Uh, but uh, he'll do. He'll prepare docs for you if you can't find somebody in your area to do it. He'll prepare him and then send him over to whoever. He's probably to. the sharpest legal mind in the industry, and he's been in this business longer than I have. He's been yeah. in it forever, and his mother was in it. His mother's still in it. She's one of the biggest uh, inner city landlords in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. And uh, has been doing that forever. And uh, she's, uh, you know, these people know what they're talking about. Yeah. So yeah. if he says you can do it, you can do it.